Hey, how you doing? Kevin Clark here. It's a privilege and an honour to be serving you at such a time as this on this fine day. I'm on a park in Mapley, Nottingham, sitting on a bench and it is so peaceful. It is bliss in fact. I really love this. I've got a few things around me to hand and this is part two of the five part series which is 101 Universal Sales Troops. If you didn't catch part one then I admonish you to do so after you've watched this one okay you'll find the video inside my profile page somewhere you have to have a look for it so enough of that how have you been happy frustrated had a challenging time i use the word challenging rather than hard challenging is a softener word if you use the word hard then your body will do everything it possibly can to support that word making your transition not a smooth one okay <laughs> so yeah how you been are you happy? Anything needs changing? If so, what needs changing? And then what are you going to do about it? Me personally, these two weeks, the growth spurts I've gone through, I'm telling you, I've gone through so much growth. I'm super happy. It's been a challenging transition for me because I've dived deep within myself and I've looked at certain things which have held me back. I've, I'm privileged and honoured to have good people around me. I'm finding that the more I align myself, is the more I attract the very things that I need that support me, that can sustain and keep me, the things that can build me up, helping me to become a better version of myself. So I'm eternally grateful for all of you. I love my community. Thank you all. So I've been going through a challenging time. I find myself shedding tears of joy tears of happiness, tears of pain, all different types of tears. But that's a sign to say, look Kev, you know, these underlying things, they've been there for all this time and they have been blocking you to reach to where you need to be. And now you've recognized that and these things have come to the forefront, you now have the chance to make a decision, deal with it or don't deal with it. It's up to you. So by admitting and by taking action, by executing, I've been managed to go through this healing process more effectively, more smoother. So I am so thankful. I'm going to continue to stay on this path that I'm on. I'm going to continue to do me and I love it. Absolutely love it. So thank you very much. I went on one then, didn't I? So let me go to number... 26. The only certain way to ensure that you, your organization, or your product are thought of first is through frequent repetitious contact. Frequent repetitious contact. Frequent, that word frequent, you've got frequent, like frequency. Frequent repetitious contact. So there's a level in how you are contacting and there's a persistence involved in it as well. So if you continue to be persistent in what it is that you are doing on a particular level, then you're gonna meet everything else on that level that will support your frequent, consistent, repetitionist behavior, okay? You'll make a point of contact. Birds are the same feathers flock together. If you've got an, a product or a service, an item, and you're shooting in a particular way, and you've aligned yourself and positioned yourself a certain way, then what will happen is if you just stay in that place for some, some time and you continue to frequently do what you're doing, then you're going to connect to the right people on that particular level as well. Okay, so that's good to know. 27. Constantly search for a person who can give you a referral for each prospect or better yet, make the initial contact for you. 28. Unless you get people to lower their mental, emotional defences and let you in, eliminate tension and establish trust, build rapport and start a successful sales dialogue, you cannot move forward to make the sale. I love that so much. That reminds me of the time when I used to do direct marketing. So direct marketing, for anyone that wants to really build up the people's skills, build up your sales skills and really get your... Um, sleeves rolled up and get into the muck of sales and have an amazing time and make some great people direct marketing I would say is the 
first point of call. So I, I used to wake up in the morning, excited, nip into the city centre, into an office with like-minded people and would all connect on this particular day in a room called the Atmosphere Room. Okay, In the Atmosphere Room, we'd all pump ourselves up, get ourselves ready, put on high energetic type music and create such an atmosphere that was electrifying before doing like one-on-one -on -one training using certain scripts and certain tools, certain words, phrases that we'll use when we go out into the marketplace, the field, okay? The field being the heart of the city center where, where we was on a particular day. Um, the field being the footfall, the people walking by in a particular place. The reason why we would start in the city centre at certain locations is because there were people that were going out to shop. So it was a case of people thinking, spending. Yeah. So if you're in an, an atmosphere where people are thinking, spending, the shopping, you know that you're going to be positioned in a way where you can make money more easier. That's the best way. I, can, I don't even know if that's the best way I can put it, but the other words that came out. So in saying that. The atmosphere room, amazing. We'd go up, all pumped up, charged up and stuff. We'd sharpen each, each other up and then we'd get all of our products or services that we're going to sell that day. Because depending on the vendor um, that we had or a dealer that um, we were selling for, would determine what products or services we're going to sell. So it could be anything from um, electricity, you know, or to um, gas. It could be... Um, tangible products, things that people can literally use, you know, items, gadgets, widgets, could have been anything on, on that particular day, we'd go into the office and we wouldn't even know what we're selling. All we know is we're going to be using a certain type of, um, we're going to use certain type of words, we're going to use a certain type of language and we're going to operate in a systematic way. I used to have a system where I'd have a, uh, a booklet broken down, I created a system and on this booklet broken down into columns I'd be able to count how many times I stopped a person, how many times I interacted with a person, what um, the outcome was for that person, how many times a person said certain things and then how many sales I made and then what I'll do is I would look at the numbers and then break everything down, look at the pattern of things Look at how I can tweet stuff. I'd have a record right in front of me of how I'd be performing on that particular day. I still have them records in some bags at home and I will dig them up and find them and take a picture and show you guys. So yeah, absolutely loved it. Direct marketing. Direct marketing involves so many things. You're looking at people's body language. 90% of communication is built upon body language. You're also looking at eye patterns. You know, like for example, when people look into the left, they tend to be thinking about the past. If people are looking to the right, they tend to be thinking about the future. If people are looking up, they tend to be pulling down information, thinking about stuff. If people are looking down, certain times they could be telling porcupines, they might be just thinking about stuff to, to say. This is just uh, something to go by. It's not a 100% rule of film, okay? Because everyone's built differently and people react in different ways for different things. But again, for different reasons rather, but again, depending on the numbers you're dealing with. Because if you're stopping people or in, interrupting people's patterns in life, walking by, if you're doing that like in hundreds a day, thousands a day, stopping thousands of people a day, you're gonna see a pattern in them numbers again, going back to what we're speaking about, the science of the thing when you're prospecting, right? So you're gonna see a pattern and you can fine tune certain things and then you can have your own art, your own style, your own way of going in that field and doing what you need to do and then making a transaction and coming out. So this is why direct marketing is brilliant. Another thing is that body contact. Um, if you're speaking to people, you're selling to people and whatnot, if you just make a slight body contact with a person, the amount of rapport that is built is ridiculous. You do that with sales script, sales words, and you're monitoring body language as well, and you're refining that art right there, you become this like sales machine. <laughs> and when you're in that zone, I'm telling you, it's something else. It is something else. This is why it's really good to interact with people on the same, in the same places where you want to be, doing the same things. Congregate with people that have the same kind of things. They say birds of the same feathers flock together, right? The power of association. If you look at the people that you choose to be around your elite group, if you look at the friends that are around you, 
then you, you can basically see what you're going to become. They say, if you want to know where a person's going, look at the friends they keep. So it's very important that you only connect yourself with things that you want to become like. If there's people that really, that you admire, like role models, then read their books, read their stories, go online, go on YouTube, listen to their um, success stories, rags to riches type of stories, bombard yourself with information, books about these characters, these people, and you will identify certain strengths from each one of these people. And when you're going through things on your journey, what will happen is you'll be like, ah, I remember when I was reading Tony Robbins' story. Ah, I remember when I was reading Lisa Nichols' story and she was speaking about X, Y, and Z and the things she went through. So I know that there's hope for me. Yeah, so we've all got a story to tell and we've all, we're all on a journey. But what makes a difference is what we decide to think about, what we decide to believe and what steps we take in order to reach to our destination. So just know, in, in saying that, just know that you are more than enough. And it's not over until you win. It's not over until you win. I could share some stories with you in regards to my definite chief aim. There's a book that I've read a few times and I'm, I keep on reading it, I fall asleep to it certain times. And inside this book, it's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. There's a section and Napoleon Hill speaks about having a definite chief aim. So. I have a definite chief aim. I won't go through my definite chief aim now. But what happens is my definite chief aim keeps me on my path of my expected end. A definite chief aim is basically a statement about who you are, what you're about, what you're, you, you expect, and what you're going to give in return. Right? And you stick to that and you say that, you read that out to yourself, you look in the mirror, you say this to yourself all the time, you keep a a copy with you in, in certain places, you memorize it, you speak it, when you go running you speak it, when you go to the gym you speak it, when you're in a situation that looks absolutely bleak, you speak your definite chief aim, you keep that thing going around, as it's going around in your subconscious mind, you keep at the forefront of your, your mind, you just keep on repetitively speaking that definite chief aim because life will happen, there's, there's all different types of challenges in life, right? There's, peaks, there's troughs, there's pits, there's all sorts, twists and turns on this journey, right, but make sure that you're going somewhere to happen, make sure that you're going in, going somewhere to happen, make sure that you're going somewhere to happen, I could speak, I could tell some stories about places where I've been, but I'm not going to, because after a time, you know, telling the stories can get draining for a bit, but again, that's then, this is now, and what I'm going to do is move on to the next one. <laughs> that was fun. Let's have a look. 29. The best way to serve your own interests is to put the needs and desires of your customer first. Wow, come on. How may I help you? Is there anything I can help you with at all right now? If a person says no, it's brilliant. You've planted the seed. You've planted the seed right there. Let's say there was an amazing, beautiful woman that just stepped inside of a room that you was inside and you know that you've been single for absolutely ages, gentlemen. You know, and it's like, you see this lady, you've come out to meet people and you've seen this lady and there's something about this lady and she's absolutely adorable and you just want to let her know <laughs> that you appreciate her as nervous as anxious as sweaty as you might get step up walk to that lady tell her you know what I am so nervous this is so uncomfortable for me well, I just want you to know that I'm so glad you walked into this room today or tonight and then go back to your seat. <laughs> I'm telling you, just make that, plant that seed, take that step. There's nothing to lose, everything to gain from that, everything. The only thing to lose is by not actually going there and um, have, you've got the courage, it's just following it through because things may appear to seem like you don't have the courage, but you do. It's false evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R, fear. That's the acronym. False evidence appearing real, okay? Feel the fear and do it anyway. Moving on. 
Yeah, so the customer first. The customer first. It's always about the customer first. I went somewhere else, but it's all about the customer first. You make sure you know what that customer wants and you can give it to them. Find out, identify what that customer wants first. What the customer wants first. Okay. Number 30. To deliver value to the prospect, you must see yourself primarily as a value resource for the prospect. That has a lot to do with you've done your research, you know your product, you know your service, you know your customer, you know that you can deliver. So that needs to be displayed. If you, if you can show certain proof of things that you've done for others, testimonials, etc., display them, speak a certain language which your customer prospect will be able to identify with regarding a product or service that they are after. Lovely stuff. Moving on. 32. Let's have a look. Resource prospect, yes, that's good. 32, never interrupt a prospect However, you need to be interruptible. Come on now, that takes self-control. Certain times you could be thinking, yeah, I know it all. And it's off-putting. It's like a fragrance that doesn't smell pleasant to the customer's nasal area. It's off-putting, it's, off, it's an off-putting um, stench. It's not a good thing to do, reason being. The customer will be so frustrated. The customer wants to let you know how they feel. They want to express what it is that they actually want. And if you're not even listening, then they'll just walk off. So that's an important lesson right there. I've done it in the past loads of times. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-three. Get your whole body involved in in listening and show that you are paying attention look the person squarely in the eye and use facial expressions and gestures to show that you hear and understand what's being said that's primarily what I was alluding to a moment ago a few moments a few moments ago in fact when I was speaking about body language okay it's a strong one it's a strong one showing people your intention showing people it's like look as you can see right now i am bothered i am interested in everything that you have to tell me <laughs> oh, i love it so i love sales so um beautiful 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 34 all values are considered equal in the absence of a values interpreter. 35. The fatal flaw in selling occurs when you are so focused on what you want to happen that you lose sight of what the prospect wants to happen. And that's picked up very easily as well. It's, it is not a pleasant experience when somebody is there almost forcing you into a direction or they may want to go into that direction. When there's forceful behavior involved, it's, it's really off-putting. A person wants to be, a buyer wants to feel relaxed, a prospect wants to be feel relaxed, and a prospect wants to be clear at the same time. If you can deliver that, the whole experience will be a better one for you both, or for you all, okay? Moving on. Yes. Oh, yes. All right, then. To a prospect, any price is too high until he or she understands the value of your product or service. Come on now. That one there is a lovely one because the value is perceived in the person that's buying it. I mean, you can look at a piece of wood or you can look at a tree. A tree to one person and a tree to another person can have two different values. I can use a paper clip, for example. I could use a piece of wire. 
person walking down the road sees a piece of wire, look at the floor, they kiss the teeth, and then they kick it to one side. What's that piece of wire doing there? Shouldn't be there on the floor. Another person could be walking down the road, see that piece of wire, ooh, yeah, ah, I've got an idea. Pick it up, fold it into three, design a paper clip. Ooh, I've got an idea of this. I could use this to stick pieces of paper together. In fact, I think what I'll do is go and patent this and, and get this manufactured and sell this. Yeah, paper clip, paper clip. Yes, mass produce this worldwide. Mm, yes, Resid residual income for life. So the value, how one perceives things. If we're just putting information out there, for example, if we're selling infra products or tangible products, whatever it is that we're selling, if we're selling any items, products or services, depending on who is looking at your products and services will determine how they value the product or service. Not everything's for everybody. That's one to remember. So just because a person may not invest, use $2,000, £2,000 to purchase a product that you're selling, doesn't mean that your product isn't less valuable or more valuable. Not at all. Somebody else will quite happily use a million to two million pounds on the same product that you have because they understand the value that they're going to receive in return. Thank you, bird. They're going to receive, they're going to perceive that value and they're going to get that value back in return once they've looked at that and it's right for them and they know that's what they need. That's what it's about. I love that one. So, 37, always tailor your presentation to the prospect's needs and wants, not yours. How may I help you? Excellent. So, you were looking for a pen. Brilliant. What type of pen are you looking for? What would you be using the pen for? Okay, tell me a bit more. Right, so you're writing checks on a consistent basis. You need something that's quite fluent and writes like, what I'll do for you is I'll get some pens and I'll let you use each one of these pens until you are happy with one of these pens. Once I know which one you're happy with, what I then do is move on to part B. So I'll be getting as much detail as possible and I kept that short and sweet for the sake of our time. Um, but we use as much as possible by finding out what the customer wants. And then if they want a, a Mont Blanc, if they want a Waterman's pen, if they want a Bic, yeah, if they want a Parker Jotter, then if you have those there, they've got a variety, and then you can break down until that customer is happy. Once that customer is happy, you will be rewarded for your efforts, for services rendered. So that's that. 38. All sales degenerate into a struggle over price in the absence of a value interpreter. Value interpreter stands out by far. 39. Avoid making price an issue yourself. Avoid making price an issue yourself. Avoid making price an issue yourself. And that's it. Just leaving it like that. You know what your products and services are worth and that is it 40 and that's where we're going to park all values are considered equal until someone points out the difference all values are considered equal until someone points out the difference that's beautiful lovely place to park so there there are some great gems some great nuggets for you to snack on and chew and I believe you'll use these gems to the best of your ability I believe you'll play this play this time and time again even if you need to download this video clip download it and keep it inside of your toolbox whilst you are out there in the world of adding value to others okay use this information to the best of your ability and there's more as well there's more tools to be found on my blog which you can access by simply clicking on the link which you'll find in the description box that link will take you to the blog and it will take you to a particular place 
where there's information and that's for you because you've been here listening you've invested your time you've used your precious time and in reward not only are you getting this but you'll also receive some more brucey bonuses okay so enjoy thank you very much it's been a privilege and an honor basking in your presence on this fine day so what i'll do is i'm going to update you um, with some other bits but part three is to come as well so do look out for part three and i love you basically keep up the great work that's it for me kevin clark believing in you and remember stay focused p.s don't forget to click on the link and go to the page all right